For months now, Breonna Taylor's name has been chanted by millions of people around the globe, demanding that the police who killed her be held accountable. And yesterday, the grand jury made its decision. New calls for racial justice, fueled by pain, frustration, and outright disappointment. Once again, rippling across this nation, overnight protests broke out in multiple cities after a grand jury decided that no charges would be brought against Louisville police in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. The protests started in Louisville, but quickly spread across this country. Demonstrations took place from coast to coast, L.A., to NYC. Crowds gathered outside police departments and courthouses and held marches in places like Milwaukee and Atlanta, demanding justice for the 26-year-old killed while she was asleep in her apartment. The grand jury determined that the officers were justified in firing the fatal shots because Taylor's boyfriend fired at them first. An officer who was later fired was indicted, but for shooting into a neighbor's apartment, nothing for the killing of Breonna Taylor. Yes. All over the U.S., frustrated people reacted to a disappointing but predictable decision, with only one officer being indicted, and not for shooting Breonna Taylor, but for shooting in the direction of her neighbors. And, you know, as I watched what unfolded yesterday, like, whether it was in the streets of Kentucky or between people interacting online, I found myself asking one question, one question that just couldn't... couldn't get unstuck from my mind. That was who is winning in this whole thing. And I'm not talking about, like, who this helps in the election, you know? Like, you take Donald Trump and Joe Biden out of this, because I don't think that this is an issue that will be solved by just an election. I'm talking about on the ground, the lives of people. Who is winning? Because to me, it looks like nobody is winning. Breonna Taylor's family isn't winning. They lost a loved one. They got no justice. And they've been thrust into a political firestorm. Black people definitely aren't winning because they've basically been told that a cop can just barge into your house and shoot you. And not only that, they can say that they were defending themselves in your house. And as if that wasn't wild enough, they'll only get in trouble for the shots that they missed? Sometimes you... Like, if only the criminal justice system valued black people as much as drywall. Because black people always told the same things, the same things, time and time again. Oh, just be a good person. You know what, if you just had a job, you know what, if you just didn't do crime, the cops would leave you alone. But now, what is it now? Now it's become, well, don't hang out with criminals or don't hang out with people who might have a history as criminals or don't hang out with associates, don't even live in a neighborhood that's considered to be criminal. But you wouldn't have to tell black people all of that because if you told the police to do their job better, and not burst into places assuming everyone is a criminal threat, then this wouldn't happen. Black people aren't winning. Why doesn't America treat the police as responsible for their own actions? They're police, they're not bears. If they were bears, then you could say, oh, black people, well, you shouldn't be hanging around the honey. I mean, you're gonna get hurt, but they're not. They're human beings. They're human beings who should be held accountable for what they do. And you know, America tells people a story. America tells people that the Second Amendment means you should get a gun to protect yourself. But then that same America tells you that if you use your gun to protect yourself in your home, then the cops have a right to kill you. And that sounds like a tyrannical government to me. And if your answer is, well, don't shoot back at the police officers that you mistake as intruders, I mean, you're admitting what we all knew is true. And that is America is a police state and its most protected class are police officers. To me, it sounds like nobody is winning because the police are also not winning, right? All that happens now is that they lose the trust of the community that they're meant to protect and serve. And now, as police, they're running around paranoid as running through the streets, praying to God that they don't get shot. Now, two of them were shot, which only increases that paranoia. Now, police are out there paranoid. The families of police are paranoid when their parents leave, when their husbands or wives leave. They're paranoid. Right? Because now they feel like an occupying force who's there to fight against the people of the city. But that's not what policing is supposed to be. You can't have effective policing if the community isn't on your side. Police aren't winning. Being a policeman in America is already terrifying. You're told every single day from your training that any moment someone's gonna pull a gun out of a glove compartment and shoot you. That's what you're trained to believe. And in part, it's true because America has so many guns. Doesn't matter if it happens or not, it's in your mind. Police are not winning. 
Black Lives Matter is not winning when this happens. Because now people are framing them as a violent organization. Oh, look, the cops got shot. It's because of Black Lives Matter. It's not because of Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter has repeatedly said that they're a nonviolent organization. And people say, like, well, then why don't you control all your members? Well, because unlike the police force, they don't have a membership structure. They don't have a record of their employees. Anyone can march in the street and claim that they're part of Black Lives Matter. We don't even know if somebody is. Someone can break a window and say it's Black Lives Matter. We don't know. What we do know is that a policeman is a policeman. They're people that can be held accountable. They're part of a structure. And when they're not held accountable, only chaos will ensue. Nobody's winning, people. The protesters aren't winning. Yeah, maybe there's 2% of protesters out there who are just trying to f shit up for fun, but by and large, protesters do not want to be protesting. People don't want to be marching through the streets, clashing with police, getting tear gas, getting beaten, getting arrested. They would much rather be living their lives. But they protest because other people can't live their lives. No one looks at a march where people are getting beaten by the cops and thinks, oh, this is a great opportunity to get my steps in. Black people are exhausted. Millions of Americans are exhausted. They're tired. Tired of feeling like they're hunted. Tired of protests in the streets in order to be viewed as equals. They're tired of, of people telling them how to protest. And trust me when I say black people would rather be at home taking a nap. Nobody is winning. And you know what yesterday got to me, but like, was, was especially the part where the, where the Kentucky AG said to people, angry about this decision, that mob justice is not justice. Yeah, but then what happens when justice is not justice? Think about it, what part of this was justice? If you wanna say, oh, well, the police followed the letter of the law, did they? Did they do what part of it is justice? If you lie to the police about what happened during a crime, the police can charge you with something, but if the police lie about what they did, nobody faces any consequences? Is that justice? What does it mean when the system says everything that happened in this Breonna Taylor shooting was legal? Issuing the no-knock warrant was legal. Breaking down the door was legal. Killing her in her bed was legal. I mean, at that point, you can say mob justice isn't justice, but then clearly justice isn't justice either. And the truth is, people, nobody's winning. As society, we are all losing right now. And until there's real justice, nobody wins.